So we do this uh, near LT tutorial, uh, basically with the goal of uh, I think an in trivial implementation uh, to see how NDA can get used in real life and uh, solving the problems. Why NDA and LT? Uh, so we fill in a real need uh, to uh, show people an example how we can use NDA to implement uh, home, smart home system that's fundamentally different from the days out before the smart home solutions. And uh, in doing so, this will be a big step forward helping the Indian uh, development. In particular, uh, this will help with uh, the security solutions because the home is a place where security is perhaps the number one requirement. Uh, at the same time, uh, security for home users is also a great challenge because you cannot uh, expect uh, your grandmother to be able to understand the crypto or doing configuration. So this is really a great test case uh, for us to deploy a solution that uh, general users often use it. In a, uh, so I will also end up my part with a clarification uh, with a few um, uh, previous efforts. So homes, you know, smart homes are with us today. Uh, I think this guy, Alex, actually brought funds to smart devices at home and the thing we said. Uh, in the home, you can see there's uh, multiple uh, different things. So uh, today, however, all of this smart home development it's kind of a remotely controlled uh, by the, the cloud uh, services. There's all the big guys there. You can see Google, there's Apple Hopkins. I think the third one is uh, from uh, Microsoft, and then there's uh, Amazon as well. So today, all the smart home solutions, uh, although I think many people already have it, that's really cloud-based. Uh, what's the problem with the cloud-controlled smart homes? One thing uh, you can see this uh, low resiliency uh, against the failures. Once in a while, not too infrequently, you see the big, uh, big news uh, breaking out. Amazon failed, or Google failed, uh, some other big guys failed. Then uh, what they ended up with is uh, that you lose the smartness um, if you don't lose the ability to uh, manage things at all. Like, uh, my home network provider spectrum. You know, I think every other week we'll have some outages. I don't have smart homes yet. Uh, if I if I did, so that'd be a few hours per week. The home is longer smart. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, the second thing is about user uh, log login. What I mean by that is that uh, you can see that each of those. Um, smart home providers, they have their, we call stove pack solutions. Uh, you buy the devices, they, uh, they support, and then uh, your home is controlled by them. There are no interoperability among the few big uh, smart home providers. So that's how you got to lock into one. Then all your data will be on the cloud. What's the problem with that? Um, Everyone has a consideration about privacy. So uh, um, you probably have seen those articles uh, here and there. Basically, for people who already have the smart home uh, devices, they have the concern that uh, this is a survey uh, done by someone to say 72% of the respondents who got the smart stuff uh, concerned about the privacy that could be uh, exploited by the smart home uh, service providers. And another survey uh, showed the same result, saying privacy is really tops the list of uh, consumer uh, concerns. Now, what you can do about it? So you can build a smart home in a fundamentally different way. Uh, how? You control. So that um, um, it's your home, you control it. Um, yeah, more specifically, is that if you're home, you control it through the wireless connectivity. Everyone got a, a Wi-Fi router at home. 
even when you are away from home, you can uh, control through the internet connection. Uh, the point is here, you know, all the communication between your phone and your smartphone will be uh, authenticated and encrypted, uh, even though your command uh, data goes through the internet, but the internet will know nothing about uh, your phone or what you are looking for. So people often ask the questions to say that, uh, are you gonna get rid of the, the cloud services? Uh, no. The point is not so much you use cloud service or you do not use the cloud service. The question is really who is in control and whether it's an external dependency. The goal of a locally controlled smart home system is that you remove the dependency, uh, whether the cloud works, whether your network connectivity uh, to the outside uh, works or not, your smart home should work. Uh, as long as you haven't lost the power. You use the cloud as a service, just like you know you buy a local storage for the stuff there. As you use them as a service. Um, you have your local home storage, you may also use the cloud storage as a backup. You can put the data uh, in the cloud. What's the difference between this case and the previous case that said you upload I mean, not you? Your smart home providers today upload your data into the cloud. If you do a locally controlled smart home, um, you use a remote as a backup storage. You save all the data in an encrypted fashion. You merely use that as a storage. Think that uh, you know, my students here, when you move, you put the boxes into the storage, right? So you use the cloud storage just in that, in that sense. You put your box in the physical storage, you don't expect the storage providers to open up your box and peek into to see what's in it. Uh, and so is your data storage in the cloud, that should go the same way. Now, there's also the question about uh, whether your data, your private data, uh, would be shared or not shared. Of course, there's a great advantages uh, from data sharing. The key point here, however, is that your data, you control. So the sharing has to be under the, the awareness of the user and uh, you know, compensated for um, as appropriate. So for this topic, um, I put a point in there uh, to a presentation by Steve Bolivan. Uh, he gave like two months ago at the IEPF, uh, essentially, uh, promoting this same direction to say that uh, the today's uh, world, others at like Google collect your data. Uh, maybe the data they got directly from you, but that could also be the data they uh, derived from whatever you do uh, elsewhere. No matter what, it's your data. So therefore, it should be under your control how that should be used. They are, uh, so if this uh, locally controlled smart home system uh, as a, the desired uh, features, how come there are no such products on the market? Uh, do you think that uh, the, the users who desire such a thing and uh, the market-driven economy always produce the results, right? From anything there is the users, uh, product should be there. So uh, my uh, personal explanation is that clearly there is a, a big uh, interest to keep the current status quo so that the current smartphone providers can run their business uh, at Euro and uh, derive their own profit. But in addition to that, I think there is a second reason that can be a bigger uh, cause. That is, the technical uh, challenges is so big, and therefore it's not just a you know a random person to say I I want to want to such a package and they could easily quit off. Uh, what are the challenges? So look at this uh, uh, little picture at the smart home then. 
uh, you get uh, the, the sound systems, you get keyways, you get uh, lights, supposedly they're smart, uh, you even have a camera. Um, in case you're away, you know what's going on. So with all these devices, the smart devices at the home, uh, you need a configuration, how they get connected, how they get IP addresses, if you want to use the this uh, TCP IP technology to build such a system. You really need a kind of a, some kind of server infrastructure. Uh, you need the DHCP servers to get addresses. You need the DNS servers to do the translation from the names to the addresses. Because when you run applications, you don't really use address. So try right, to say address 1.2.34, you're going to do this. And 5, 6, and 7, 8, then do other things. So you need uh, those uh, uh, servers to, to carry out the necessary things. And then not to mention, it's not like you put a DNS server there uh, that works, you know, to configure, uh, putting up the database and other things. Those are not the scale of the general home users. The furthermore, now, we say we have to build a secure, smart, home system. Uh, security means crypto protection. Now, on the internet today, we have um, secure HTTP, and that requires the certificate authorities so that you can get certificate, they do the authentication, and then uh, you do the encryption. If you want to do smart home, standing alone, you got need uh, to deploy a C server as well. Um, how you issue all the certificate, how you manage those, those uh, uh, crypto keys, so that uh, um, the devices, even the uh, resource constrained one, for example, your life, may not have a lot of uh, computation powers there, uh, especially for little sensors for your temperature. And how you do the crypto protection uh, for those devices, big and small. And in particular, there will be lots of numbers, big numbers out there. How you manage the keys for all of them? Uh, you clearly cannot just have one key for all the different devices because some could be vulnerable. Uh, share the keys have this danger, one compromised one, and that uh, damage the whole thing. Other things is the policies. Um, you may frequently have visitors coming to the home. Of course, the visitors should have a comfortable stay. They should be able to turn on the light and turn off the light. Uh, but what about the other things? If you have a safe at the home, that's probably you know, not in the uh, scope of uh, the visitor access. And uh, What about your front doors? Uh, who can open or who cannot open the front doors? Uh, Besides the people, the human users, there can also be the devices. Um, they can, for example, you have the air conditioning. Listening to the sensor, based on the temperature, they turn on and turn off. But uh, say you want the, the air conditioning to turn on turn off uh, the lights, probably not appropriate. So, the, the point is that there's a complex security policies among the home users, among all the devices. How you define, and in particular, how you execute uh, those complex the, uh, security policies. So those are really, I think, the current kind of challenges. We don't have such a solutions yet. They, um, like I, I use a personal example, uh, my husband is pretty hands up. So if you want to fix something at the home, he's now talking about remote or the, uh, the bathroom. So I would go to the Home Depot. Um, I think that most of you probably know Home Depot is a place where you can buy all kinds of uh, home improvement tools, uh, materials, and bring things, then you can manage it yourself. The question for building a smart home is that currently we do not have a Home Depot equivalent for the tools, for the materials. You can just go there and buy something, come home, build a smart home yourself. And that's what this uh, Indian LT effort uh, aims to fulfill. I'm not saying that we're here yet, 
but I think we currently have a very preliminary prototype going into that direction. So back to uh, where we are now, uh, you want to uh, provide the users with automatic uh, configuration and with automatic security. How you do that, um, think about the, uh, if, if uh, the people assume that you are smart enough, you can manage everything, so you actually can do everything yourself. Uh, you know uh, who should control what, what which device should talk to which devices. How, how would the human do that? Because the human understands the semantic meaning of the applications. You can figure out the relations of what should do what, uh, who gets what right. Uh, now, if you want to automate all of that, it really requires the, the cyberspace, your solutions, need to build those application level semantics uh, into the system so that the system can reason about what should be done uh, through those semantic uh, meanings you build into the system. So that's what uh, the essence of name the data or name the data networking. That's why we use application level semantic names uh, that will provide this kind of uh, framework, uh, the, the architectural foundation to enable people to build such uh, systems and to develop uh, the tool set to uh, allow the end users to build smart homes. That's the, uh, the beginning, and uh, the next talk will be given by a uh, GE a PhD student at uh, UCLA remotely uh, explaining uh, where we are in terms of uh, sketching out uh, the framework of building the smart homes. So come here and talk about uh, how NDN can help uh, advance the, the, how the smart home can help advance the NDN uh, development. Uh, to me personally, I think NDN has so many advantages in so many different places, but I still see uh, the building security as perhaps the, the biggest advantage uh, for NDN. Because uh, today, the internet faces the great security challenges. And there's so much effort has gone into the, uh, the direction to say how we fix the things. But just based on how frequently uh, the, the news is gonna show up on the front page about the internet uh, security uh, incidences, that shows where we are. The biggest challenge about uh, the security is really how you can uh, uh, have the protocol protection. And uh, it's not like uh, people don't know how to do it. Uh, the theoreticians have developed the great tools to, uh, to solve all kinds of problems. But uh, the usability, I think, so far uh, is a big uh, roadblock. You cannot expect the home users to understand protocol. So when we have this uh, home IoT system, uh, it has to be, uh, uh, I said, automatic, automatically enable the security protection. So what I'm seeing here is that you cannot expect home users to be able to understand crypto, uh, but you can automate your system uh, to uh, provide that automatically. And uh, I think I mentioned already that home environment is the biggest challenge about usability. So therefore, uh, I think the the NDN LT really help us advance the usability of our design. I think now um, it's my last slide. I want to explain the relations between uh, the tutorial and uh, the material we're going to talk today with some other efforts. Uh, the the CCN light is the very first one, uh, really young, several years back. Brought the early version of NDN called the CCN uh, to uh, constrain the devices. So why didn't we go continually in that direction? Because uh, for one, that early porting into the constrained environment didn't really have security support uh, entirely. And second is uh, uh, that was a very old uh, version of the ICN development uh, by uh, Van Jacobson in the before the, before the 2010, 
so that uh, the uh, protocol is no longer compatible with uh, what we are developing today. Uh, I think uh, the, um, the Thomas and the Matthias uh, are here. They developed this uh, the IoT system framework called the Riot. Um, so Riot is a system framework, and uh, the in IoT um, would be an uh, ideal. The, the LT support uh, to, uh, to be ported into the right. We actually have been taking track or keeping in touch with them uh, to see if uh, we can get that uh, ported over. There's an earlier version of uh, the NBN LT is called the uh, NBN RAM, as a matter of fact. Uh, so the relation between the NBN light, given here next, with uh, the earlier one called the NBN drive. Someone heard that uh, Alex uh, gave that talk, I think, two years back. It's that uh, uh, NDN Live was actually uh, started with NDN uh, Riot, uh, but uh, we have substantially uh, extended uh, that uh, original uh, prototype and added a number of uh, new functionalities. 